These past days in our Diocese of Down and Moor and across all the churches in our diocese, we've been engaging in prayer. We've been seeking the face of God together. We began on Ascension Thursday uh, and every day there's been a different focus uh, as to how to pray. And we've been in coming before the Lord and asking for an outpouring of his Holy Spirit upon ourselves and upon our churches and upon our nation and indeed upon our world uh, in these extraordinary days. Uh, and today we're uh, having a day where men are invited to come before God to pray. Now we were to be having a prayer breakfast this morning in Kilkeel and I was really looking forward to that because as someone who spent uh, ten and a half years as rector in Kilkeel I, I knew that the breakfast would be really really good and I was looking forward to a particularly good Ulster fry this morning. Uh, I was also looking forward indeed to connecting with the new rector in Christ Church afterwards, uh, the Reverend Ali Calvin, and I was hoping that she might even show me around the rectory, which I know has had an incredible amount of work carried out to it uh, in recent times. And then I was really looking forward to, very much looking forward to going up to the Silent Valley and going for a walk around what was for many years my favourite spot on earth to go for a walk, the Sally Law, uh, up at the Sally, at the Silent Valley. But I'm afraid I'm just going to have to look at the picture behind me for now. And uh, travelling that distance and going for a walk there is for another day whenever these restrictions are lifted and we're allowed to do that. So for today, uh, I want to share with you guys some verses from the book of Ezekiel. Uh, and I want they, those verses to become a basis that would enable you and I to come before the Lord today and spend time with him today in prayer. <clears throat> prayer for ourselves, prayer for other men, prayer for our churches and our communities, uh, and indeed prayer for our nation and for our world. The verses are found in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, beginning to read at verse 22, verses 22 to 27 of Ezekiel chapter 36, beginning to read at verse 22. Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. And I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God, when through you I vindicate my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness and from all your idols. I will cleanse you and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. Let me just pray as we turn to these verses together. Let's pray. Lord, we do pray that you would speak now into the heart and the mind and the life of each man that's engaging, Lord, in this day of prayer today and that's listening to these words just now. I pray, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, be our teacher. Come Holy Spirit and be the one that teaches us how to pray. 
come Holy Spirit and fill our lives and in filling us fill other lives with your Holy Spirit this day. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. The men who would have heard these words in Ezekiel chapter 36 would have been men who had been deported, men who'd been taken into exile. So they were in their day a people who were uprooted and knew they had been uprooted and felt uprooted. Verse 24, and I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. There may be a sense that in these strange days we feel a bit uprooted. Uh, uprooted out of what has been our pattern for life and for living. Uh, and thrust into a way of doing life that we're learning in a new way uh, every day. For, for these men who would have been listening as well to these words in Ezekiel 36... There was for them a sense of their belonging, their rootedness being tied into their national identity, to their connection to their homeland, something that went back for them generations. And again, that will be true for each of us and for all of us uh, in different ways. But it's also true for us that that's not sufficient. It is a good thing, but it's not a sufficient thing. Because there is a rootedness that needs to become my rootedness and your rootedness that's about being rooted in the Lord Jesus Christ. And finding increasingly that our identity is in him. Discovering more and more what it really is to be a child of God, to be a son of God. What it really means as well to be a citizen of God's heavenly kingdom to knowing that we belong to God and that he dwells and lives in us that we've been made God's children uh, I've always loved the way that John puts it in the first chapter of John verses 12 and 13 but to all who did receive him who believed in his name he gave the right to become children of God Children who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. There's a, a song that we often sing in our churches nowadays, I am a child of God. It's, a, it's an incredible truth. It's a, it's a wonderful truth that when we believe in Jesus Christ, when we turn away from and repent of our sins and uh, believe in his cross and in his resurrection and believe that Jesus is for us and died in our place and believe in Christ, put our trust in Jesus, then we become his children. We become the children of God. We're adopted into his family. We're made his. We become his by adoption and by grace. Ezekiel understands something of that and captures something of that in, in that verse 24. I will take you from the nations and gather you from the countries and bring you into your own land. Yes, it was a physical land, but for us it's, it's, it's a new birth. It's a new place. It's a new relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. Ezekiel goes on to talk about cleansing and washing in verse 25. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness, all your uncleanness, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. Further down in verse 29 he writes, and I will deliver you from all your uncleanness. Men, you and I can know the forgiveness of God. We can experience the cleansing of God. We can be washed and cleaned 
and forgiven and we can feel clean and we can know that we are washed and know that our sin has been dealt with. The blood of Jesus, the Bible tells us, cleanses us, or in some translations, goes on and on and on, cleansing us from all sin. It's a reality that sin makes us dirty uh, and that we feel dirty. You know what it's like in the natural after a day in the garden, perhaps even handling fertilizer of the natural kind, the bio manure or whatever. You know what it's like to spend time uh, working on that machinery and your hands are covered uh, in grease and you feel dirty. You need to get into the shower. You need to be washed and you need to be made clean. And we've discovered, haven't we, in these recent weeks, just something more by way of the need to be clean as we use our hand sanitizers uh, before we pick something up. We use our hand sanitizers even after we handle something as straightforward as uh, the, the handles of a shopping trolley. Uh, and even some of us are, are, are grateful now to get out once a week to go to the shops to do shopping. Some of us never thought we would admit that. Uh, but we are discovering something more of the importance of being clean. How much more as followers of Jesus Christ, as those whose cleansing and washing has been paid for by the blood that he shed on the cross, by the water that gushed from his side, how much more, how much more should we not long to be men who are clean and who live a clean and holy life in the presence of God and before God and walk with God with clean hands and with a pure heart day by day? And the good news is that there is cleansing, that there is washing. Yes, our sin offends God. It makes us stink quite literally, spiritually speaking. And we might even feel overcome by our sense of guilt or shame. Our sin perhaps even embarrasses us. Whatever that sin might might be in, in your life or in my life, whether it's... Uh, whether it's jealousy, envy, uh, outbursts of anger, uh, inappropriately looking at stuff we shouldn't look at on the internet, whatever it, it happens to be, there's cleansing, there's forgiveness, there's washing. David, after his adultery, prayed in Psalm 51, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. In verse 7 he said, Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. And Ezekiel just captures it here when he says in verse 25, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness. From all your uncleanness. Whatever comes to mind, as you hear that phrase, there's cleansing, there's washing. And from all your idols, I will cleanse you. Paul, in his writing, would go on to say of those who had become followers of Jesus Christ after listing a, a, a list of uh, lifestyles that were offensive to God. He goes on to say, that's who you were, but now... He says, you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. And the writer of Hebrews captures it, he says, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Amen. We can know that we're the sons of God. 
uh, and men, we can experience cleansing. The Christian life enables us to experience the washing, the cleansing, the forgiveness, the taking away of our guilt and of our wrong and of our sin. The Bible's so clear, so clear. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Uh, back in the day when I was rector of Kilkeel, there was an old hymn we would have sung. It's a very, it's got some very profound words. There is power, wonder-working power in the blood. And the blood of Jesus Christ is the source of being made clean and knowing we're knowing that we've been forgiven. So, men, we can know and more fully know that we are those who have been adopted and made God's son, sons. We can know and more fully know that we've been washed and that we've been cleansed. And even as Christian men, we need to live pure, holy, clean lives and deal with our stuff, deal with our sin, bring it to the cross and ask Jesus Christ to forgive us and to wash us clean. And then in these verses of Ezekiel, we see that there's something that happens in the heart of the man of God whereby we become new men. Listen to how Ezekiel puts it. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and to be careful to obey my rules. We are made new. We begin to think the way Christian men should think. We begin to live the way Christian men should live. We begin to feel emotion, feel emotion and deal with our emotions in ways that Christian men should deal with their inner lives and with their emotions. It's an inner transformation that leads to a, a radical outworking and outliving of what it means to be a Christian man in today's world. A new heart in us, a new spirit, the Holy Spirit indwelling us. We, we live differently because we are different. We are different because God now lives in us by his Holy Spirit. God gives us the Holy Spirit and that's what makes us different. The Holy Spirit living in us and, and the, the Holy Spirit going on to renew and fill us more and more and more day by day. Listen to how Paul puts it when he was writing to the church at Rome in Romans 8. He said, there is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and sin. He condemns sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law, the righteous requirement of the law, might be fulfilled in us. So, as we come in here to land, as we come to uh, near a conclusion, I want to encourage you, I want to invite you, uh, I want to say to you, uh, set aside time on this Saturday to pray. Maybe you'll go for a walk uh, and do that on your own. Maybe you'll connect with another little group of men by Zoom or in some other way that the government guidelines allows you to do that. And uh, maybe even through uh, whatever means you'll connect with, maybe even some of your own family and spend time uh, today to pray. And I want to encourage you to, to pray a number of things. But to pray that God would fill you and, and fill me and fill all of us afresh with his Holy Spirit. Take time before the Lord to pray for yourself and to pray, come Holy Spirit, baptize me, fill me, flood my life, soak me again with your life-giving Holy Spirit. And just pray that prayer. 
spend time, take time to pray that prayer and to receive from God a fresh infilling of his spirit today. Then begin to pray for that same Holy Spirit to flood the lives of other men that you know and care about. And pray then that that same Holy Spirit would flood the very life and energy and work and ministry in your church and the churches across this diocese. First of all, take time to do that. And, and you know, as you do that, you can press the pause button for 10 minutes, for half an hour, for a couple of minutes, whatever it is, uh, length of time that you take to pray like that, even now, for God the Holy Spirit to come and baptise and fill and soak you and others afresh. Come, Holy Spirit. And then, maybe secondly, you would pray that in these days, God would grant to us, to me, to you, to all of us, a, a, a new spirit of repentance. That we would, as men, cry out to God in repentance and ask the Lord to wash us and to cleanse us and to make us clean. That we would name our sin. That we would name the sins of our societies. That we would name the sins of our communities to God. And that we'd ask for forgiveness and for cleansing for ourselves, first of all. And then that we'd ask for the cleansing blood of Jesus to wash away the guilt and the shame and the sin in our society and in our nation and in the nations today. I will take from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. Let's pray for an outpouring of a spirit of repentance upon ourselves and upon others in these days. Maybe again you'll want to press the pause button and just take some time to earnestly engage with God in that way. And then, thirdly, perhaps we might take time to really pray that we'd know what it is to be clean, what it is to be washed, and to be filled in a fresh way with the peace that comes from knowing that we have been forgiven and with the assurance that comes with knowing that we have been made uh, new by a work of God within us. Verse 25 says, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness and from all your idols I will cleanse you. Maybe there are idols in our own lives that we might want to name before the Lord. Maybe there's some idols in our churches that we've become aware of in these days when we've maybe had to go without some of those same idols. Maybe there are some idols simply in how we do life in our workplaces or in our businesses or in our general everyday living. Let's name our own idols before the Lord and ask him to tear them down. And then perhaps we need to take some time to name the idols in our churches and in our society, having dealt with our own, ask him to remove those idols too. And so thirdly, let's ask the Lord to enable us to experience what it is to be cleansed and to have those idols destroyed. And maybe, again, you'll press the pause button and take a little bit of time to do that. And then, finally, dare we pray 
for something by way of a transformation in our lives that would bring about such radical change in us that we mightn't even be able to quite recognise ourselves because we would be so transformed and changed by the power of the gospel. We would be so filled and overwhelmed by the presence of the Holy Spirit that God the Holy Spirit would so come and fill your life and fill my life that we would be soaked, baptised, use whatever language you like with the holiness of God, with the grace of God, that our passion would be for the gospel and to see the gospel proclaimed in our nation, that what we would live for would be to please Jesus Christ by our holy living and that we would know in a deep, deep way, the Father's love and the Father's care as his sons, as his children. Dare we pray, I invite you to pray that we would be changed and transformed and then that our churches and our communities and our very nation would be transformed and changed by the power of the gospel as the Holy Spirit would visit us in power. Ezekiel wrote, I will give you a new heart. It's not, it's not even a second hand one, it's a brand new one. I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. That we would love his ways because he dwells in every corner of our lives as the Holy Spirit fills us more and more and more. And so I pray, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. I'm gonna simply pray a closing prayer and my longing is that you will do what we used to say uh, in the old days that you would do business with God and that today would be a special day for you as you encounter just the Lord again and are filled more and more and more with his Holy Spirit and as you pray that God would open the windows of heaven and pour down upon Ireland and upon our communities and our churches and our parishes such a blessing that actually dare we believe that we might not be able to contain it. Let's pray. Come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, uh, into the life of every man that's listening, come right now. And Holy Spirit, fill that man with your spirit more and more. Soak him, Lord, baptise him, Lord, fill him with the Holy Spirit. Fill him with your life-giving Holy Spirit. Fill him, Lord, like never before. May he know your grace and your truth, your mercy and your love, your sonship and your cleansing, your washing and your forgiving. Fill him. Fill him. Soak him. Baptise him. Fill him with the Holy Spirit. For you are holy, Lord God. So as you fill us with your Holy Spirit, 
make us to become holy men for your glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be upon you and upon your family, upon your church community and upon all those among whom you live and work this day and always. Amen. Thank you.